Now it seems like a well overdue point to talk about uh, always on encryption and from this point of view we're going to focus on the TLS part of that. That means the certificate that's used for connecting to the SQL server. Now unlike your typical connection where it's just a single certificate type scenario, when you have a cluster you have individual nodes that require certificates and or those cluster packages. So we're going to focus on that for a moment. Now diving into some of the prerequisites, one of the things that we need to be able to do is confirm that the certificate doesn't exist or that it doesn't match a certain criteria. So here we're going to sort through the certificates and look for a uh, value. In this case, does the certificate exist matching our criteria? And the answer is no, because there's no certificate on this machine. So that's a simple enough check. Now later we'll do a check with whether we have a valid certificate and sort orders, but that's something that will be covered in the script and don't worry about not being able to follow the actions uh, all of this will be covered by an external script in the link below you can also see that we went ahead and tested whether clustering is installed this is another valid check for this type of build because you want to make sure that a cluster is first installed and that it's running before you create a certificate for a cluster so that's the two basic components of our prerequisite checks that we're going to put into a script. Does the certificate exist? Is this a cluster? And then some other variables around it. As an example, does it have all the components that the certificate needs? So here we go ahead and created a certificate. And I want to show you that the certificate is missing some details. So we have a basic machine certificate, but we only have a DNS entry for the machine itself. So there's no entry for any of the availability groups or any of the other FQDN information, which is kind of a problem if you need to connect to those as well. It can generate a certificate chain issue. So the question obviously is how do we avoid that? And the answer is well we need another check as well to go in and confirm does the certificate have the information available that's required. Uh, a good example of this would be if you add an availability group with a listener or remove it, does that still exist? So we are going to have a couple of checks into this script. So we've got the does it the cluster exist? Uh, is the cluster running? Because you can have cluster components installed, doesn't mean there's a cluster there necessarily. Um, then is the certificate created? Does it exist? And then we can go from there on to checking slightly more complex stuff like is the listener there and is it within the certificate that's there so here we see we go through basically an array uh, creating out all the cluster components basically the listeners in this case then comparing the array to confirm whether or not the certificate is valid so yes this is a cluster that's the only output but if we look at the check in here, it should have a cert valid equals and it should either be true or false. So if I just go ahead and query the value, um, we're going to see that it's false because the certificate doesn't have all of the previously mentioned values. So in this case, this should be the machine name plus the two availability group listeners. So therefore, it will be false simply because it doesn't match. So we can further check what is the available in terms of what it's looking for as well. So if I use the array value, as you can see, we collect the array and then do a compare. So let's check the array value and see what should be in that certificate that we're not getting. So within the array, we have three lines, the machine certificate and the two listeners, which would be listed in the alternate uh, values in the cert. So our last check in theory would be to go with the above information and if the cert, uh, or in this case certificate valid is false to trigger the action to create a new certificate. So I've got a stored procedure that I've created, or well, in this case it's a function, um, and that function will go ahead and create the certificate based on the available information. So in this case the listeners. Now, like I said earlier, this script, it will be shared, so you can go ahead and look it up yourselves. But in this case, I've just got a set SQL cert, and then you can see it's gone ahead and created a new certificate 
because the thumbprint is different. And if I quickly refresh, we can see we have a separate cert created. And if we go down to the alternate names, you should be able to see that that value exists with all three now listed. Now remember, the machine must always be the first one. That's one key important factor. Another thing I'd like to highlight on this one is your machine, if it's running SQL with the local machine account, aka NT Authority, NT Authority must have access to these certs, otherwise it will not work properly. So honestly, best option in all of these scenarios is to have a domain account, preferably a group managed service account. So putting this all together, so here's the script end to end, here's our stored procedure, here's our checks, and again, this is something that was prepared during this video, so I know that I've made some changes to the one that was uploaded later, um, minor improvements, some bug fixes, but the general concept is there. Now, why would you have this script? You're probably asking. Well, the answer is simple. If you create or remove an availability group, your certificate should be updated. You should never use wildcards or large uh, certificates as blank statements to get around the fact that you don't have that information when you're creating it. It should always be as limiting a factor as possible so that you don't have always to uh, worry about can another machine be created with similar certificates to basically invalidate your security. So keeping it as nailed down as possible is the end goal. So here we've triggered our script, we've got a certificate created. We can also see that the script also uh, improves the security by adjusting the registry entries which SQL depends on for the certificate and the forced encryption. Now I haven't included a restart and depending on your environment you might want to include some restart and some restart logic to it like restart the uh, instance that's not the primary at this moment etc. And we might go on to do that in another video as to how you could build that logic. But for now this ends our video. Now, if you like this video, uh, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. And as always, subscribe for more content and be sure to check out that link.